All right, everybody. Hello there, and welcome to Not Just Blowing Smoke. Coming at you from Twin Smoke Shops. Uh, maybe they're our new headquarters. Who knows? In Londonderry, New Hampshire, right from the 724 Lounge. Um, we weren't able to get internet tonight, so we recorded this and put it up after the fact. Um, but uh, make sure, whether you're listening on Podbean, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Spotify, iTunes, or Google, or wherever else you found this podcast, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you don't ever miss a thing. I am Pastor Padron. I'm here with my co-hosts, Nick and Dave. Nick. Oh, I'm so sorry. Pat. 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 Wow. Pat and Dave. I don't know why I was thinking about Nick. Either. That's almost sad. It's because of the stress. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we're smoking the Timeless 10-year, and it features a Dominican wrapper and binder and filler from both Nicaraguan and Dominican. And it is a Robusto Grande, five and three quarters by 55. So it's kind of a odd size uh, cigar. And it's uh, made in the Dominican Republic by Casada Cigars, which also produces the Timeless Prestige and Sterling lines for uh, Terrio Fuego now. And uh, it's only com- it only comes in this size. And um, what do we think of the cigar so far? Well, I just got mine lit. It's very creamy. It's very smooth. A lot of... Lot of- Mild earth and leather. It has a, um, like when I first smoked it, the thing that I noticed on the cold draw was there was this kind of like sweet kind of raspberry kind of flavor to mm-hmm. it. And, you know, a lot of the time we do a cold draw, typically those flavors don't actually get met when you put flames in the cigar, but that kind of like raspberry sweetness is still on the palate when you actually light it up. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I do enjoy about it is with Dominican tobacco, there's a really unique kind of like leathery note to it. And this cigar has that as a really like nice, delicate, like woody note to it. Mm-hmm. A nice, subtle spice in the retro and a kind of culture palette. And again, like, you know, I, I didn't really get the opportunity to smoke many timeless cigars mm-hmm. when um, they were out before, before they went out of business. So I, I don't really know what to compare it to. Right. But it's to me a very good cigar i was really happy with it when i tried it and we're pairing with it a uh, rabbit hole bourbon correct yep it's the the boxer grail it's named after a racehorse it's one of their newest products Mm. and the info that i have on it is that it's um it's toasted and charred in a new american oak barrel and it's a mash of 95 percent rye and five percent malted barley and then it's aged uh, for at least two years in the toasted shower of the American Oak. Mm. And it's 47.5 ABV. It's very tasty. And it does have a kind of a, uh, almost like a berry kind of a note to it, which I think goes well with the cigar. Yep. Um, I get a lot of creamy notes off of this. Cream, nuts. Uh, there is that kind of light, fruit-like sweetness uh whether it's raspberry or not i don't know but um it is a very naturally sweet very pleasant cigar um it is very enjoyable these have been doing very well for us here at twins right Mm -hmm. yeah and um you know i've i have to confess i've never been a big timeless fan myself but uh this is the second uh 10-year cigar that i've had and it's really really enjoyable i I have to say i i i've been really impressed with this i was a little i was a little uh nervous seeing timeless come back and then this cigar come out with a price point that was you know close to double what most of the timeless were when they were out on the market several years ago Mm -hmm. um but this is this is a really really nice, very smooth cigar. Pleasantly su- uh, surprised. I'm glad I tried it. Yeah, it's very smooth, like you said, and it's got like this really nice peanutty flavor to it, like peanut mm. shell. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it's got some really obvious nuttiness to it. And butter notes, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's very buttery. And there's like this in the... When I'm blowing out the smoke, I get a little bit of citrus on the tip of my tongue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I just I just got the same sensation. And it's a great oily wrapper, too. Mm -hmm. It's got this nice uh, bright sheen to it. It's very, very good. Um, all right, so a couple of things uh, before we get into talking a little bit more about the pairing and the cigar itself. Obviously, there have been a few changes going on here at Not Just Blown Smoke. Uh, last week, we weren't able to uh, get an episode up at all. Mm. And uh, that was for a number of reasons, um, one of which I was uh, ill myself. And uh, then we had a... Uh, a worker uh, call out and Pat had to cover for them last Tuesday night. So it was either going to be the Dave show or no show. And uh, Dave, no show, Dave, no show, <laughs> the Dave show. Uh, but I completely understand that. I mean, talking for, uh, you know, even if, even if it was a short episode, it would have been hard to do all, all by your lonesome. It's, it's uh, difficult with just three people here, you know, um, it's great. Four people is like prime for one of these things. So I'm hoping we're able to get Shell back or somebody else back on the show on a regular basis. But uh, we also had the opportunity to um, record live at the 724 Lounge. And here we are. We're looking out at everything. And it's a good crowd here tonight at Twins. And we got a bunch of people who are watching the show. And... Uh, uh, Kendra, the potion master, is over there at one of the tables, and um, uh, it's nice. It's nice to be back here. You know, this is where not just blowing smoke started, mm -hmm. and um, despite all the troubles we had getting uh, things set up tonight and next week, we'll have a little bit more of an idea of what we're dealing with. So, hopefully, things are able to go better next week. But, um, what do you guys think about coming back? and recording where it all started i i'm excited for it i i think uh it'll solve a lot of the like internal not just blowing smoke problems we were having but at the same time i think uh you know doing it in, in a, a live lounge is uh um it's just a little bit of spice i think the show might need uh you just need to figure out the internet problem <laughs> and uh, we'll be good to go i think you know i think it'll be a lot of fun I think so, too. I think we can hopefully get things going. Pat, what do you think about being back? You weren't here with us when we started. Mm. No, I mean, I definitely i have kind of always wanted to have the show at the lounge. Mm -hmm. you know, not only because of a live audience or anything like that, but I just think that, you know, the pairings and everything that we do, being in the building that you have access to the spirits and the cigars, I think it yeah. kind of... You know, if you want to watch, you know, after the fact or you want to watch live at home, that's good. But if you also want to have that experience in person, again, the whole thing's about the experience. So it kind right. of adds another avenue for people to actually enjoy the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I love the fact that uh, people can sit and watch and listen or ask questions right here. Um, and I also, the, the one thing I miss the most about being at hooks it and i i enjoy being at hooks it we had our own space we were able to take the lounge and and make it into our own studio obviously we had a lot of control over that that uh we're going to need to assert here if we're going to make this work mm -hmm. but um the one thing i really missed was being away from the bar and you know not only you know the 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 ladies and stuff but um, no, well, some of our much... best episodes were like, you know, we got a drink from Kendra. She brought it down. We were just like floored, right? You know, right. And then we would ask for seconds or thirds or something like that. It was part of the, it was part of like, you know, the love of the show that that just left. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And it was really hard to recapture that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And asking Kendra or the other bartenders to take a evening out of their time mm -hmm. when they spend so much time here. Hello. We'll see you later. <laughs> you know, it was really, really good. 
So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm loving the fact that we're back for that. Yeah. You know, and we drove right back into the Kendra. We need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Three minutes before the show. Before the show. And you know, she did it just all the stress of her doing it came right back. It was great. I loved I loved seeing that. But mm -hmm. um it's it's really nice. Um so you know, as you watch the show here, we'd love to know what you guys think. Mm -hmm. Uh who are watching, uh about you know, thoughts about the venue here. Is this something that, that works? Um I like the fact too that I can like look over at you. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, this is, you know it's a lot more. Uh, that was one of the things I was thinking too. You know, it's like it's it's really hard to like communicate with each other mm -hmm. um, when you're like leaning forward, leaning back. You know, and it, it just you know this is more. It's more of a discussion area. Yeah, you know? yeah, and not just blowing smoke. It's always been kind of a lounge talk kind mm -hmm. of setup. It's not really scripted. Yeah, we have subjects to talk about, but now um, we actually have good pictures on the wall too. Not <laughs> like you know, half naked ladies chained to a well or anything. <laughs> yep. So, you know, I I I'm thinking this could work if we could work out some of these. Yeah, if we get the internet. I'm totally behind it. We just need to you hear <laughs> that, Sean. The, the most important part of the show. We just we need we, we need, need internet. internet. We need internet to work. <laughs> Make it happen, yeah. Sean. We can't have like this. Make it happen. Forty dollar Best Buy special router over there. <laughs> oh my goodness! Um, so this thing is burning beautifully, razor sharp all the way around. The um, ash is holding on really nice. It's not uh, flaking at all. Nope. And. Um, the flavor profile is pretty much staying the same so far. Uh, but what do you guys think about the pairing here uh, with the rabbit hole? I think the pairing is pretty complimentary. Um, it's not overpowering the cigar. Mm -hmm. It's adding to the butteriness of the cigar. Um, I've never had this rabbit hole before, so... Can't really speak to what's changing about it, mm -hmm. but so far I'm I'm liking the pairing. I think it out, almost brings out more of that berry sweetness in the cigar you were talking about. Do you think? Yeah, I mean that's the benefit of again being at the lounge is before the show, even though it was last minute. But <laughs> you know Kendra knows her stuff, so you know it's more than enough time for her to decide something. But you know I said. Subjectively, I got a unique kind of raspberry note to you guys. It could be just a fruity note to me. It kind of spoke raspberry. And I just said, you know, something that might have kind of a berry sweetness to it. But I said, you know, maybe a little bit of a baking spice kind of finish to a bourbon would go really well with it. And the, the rabbit hole, like, hands, you get that really nice kind of like caramel, kind of creamy kind of palate flavor. The finish has like a nice kind of heat baking spice to it. Yeah. And then it does bring out that kind of raspberry note on the cigar, which is, to me, what's very unique about this cigar. Mm. Again, it, it it touches on what I would say a good Dominican cigar has, like that like nice leather note. Yep. You know, some of that kind of red pepper you get from that really volcanic soil. So it, it, the drink definitely just enhances that completely. It's It's not contrasting anything. It's adding to it. And then in a few moments, I can kind of tell you what it does to the drink, but. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so what was it like, Pat, working uh, last Tuesday, sans Brett here at the bar? Did you miss doing the podcast? Were you like, thank God there's no podcast? So I didn't work last Tuesday. You didn't work last Tuesday. No. What happened to you? When you said you were sick and I wasn't sure what you were sick with, I stayed away from, with like a 10-foot pole because I have midterms coming up and that would have been pretty bad. Oh, so you left Sean high and dry, huh? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Got an extra headset, Sean. <laughs> 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 So, Dave, you were very adamant last week mm. that you were going to do the show. Yes. Even if it was just you. Yep, I was. And I was. What, what changed? 
what, I was, what happened. I just didn't know, you know, if I was gonna, uh, if I was gonna do what we were set up to do, you know, and I didn't feel like I should. And then I was thinking about, well, what could I smoke? What should I smoke? Should I just do like Dave's faves or something like that? <laughs> Dave's and that just faves. sounded so corny. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? We haven't had a day off or a podcast off in like three years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Never, that was the first day we've ever yeah. missed. Yeah, and I don't remember any single episode of any show ever that never would have had a perfect, you know, where at least one episode didn't show up one week, and you were like, mm. "Damn it, why didn't it air?" You know. So I'm like, "Well, there's ours." So we had one, missed one out of three years. That's not bad. Nope. Nope, it's not, not bad, bad at all. Considering that we don't even get paid for this crap anyway. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, there we go. That's why I felt like it would be, it wouldn't really do the, the podcast justice to be by myself as far as content. It wouldn't be consistent, you know, and it would just, it would, yeah, it wouldn't, the quality level would just wouldn't be there. <laughs> what do you <clears throat> think about the uh, change from seats behind a table? the couches totally down with it you totally down with it oh yes Sokka would have liked it <laughs> yeah he would have he would have appreciated it i, think I would it's, probably like, would have had to move over a little bit more <laughs> i think it's better i mean you look at obviously there's there's no guests in the show tonight but say there was like it's a lot more like conversation based mm-hmm. not only because you're in like a social environment we're not just at hooks it after hours but just kind of the format of it's just much more social and then i already can kind of imagine like you know say Sokka was on tonight you know right the consumers and patrons here could contribute to the show by kind of having the experience with the guests so i think like but to answer the original question about the chairs big fan like i <laughs> i think by the end of every show like my back is like torqued like it my but, butt's numb yeah it's bad yeah. you know and i i always feel like i'm gonna like the, the chair is gonna break yeah I'm not a big fan of the other chairs. No. Mm-hmm. No. All right. So, yep. well, especially since I remembered like, when you were like, hey, let's do it in Londonderry. Like, one of the first things I thought of was like, they just replaced all the chairs. Mm-hmm. So, these are nice, brand new leather mm-hmm. couches. Oh, not even broken in yet. It's great. I'm sure you'll do your part to break them in, Dave. Mm-hmm. Um,. So I, what I'm picking up from you guys is that that you kind of like doing it here. Yeah, I mean, if we can kind of fix, you know, the the issues and everything, but I mean, that I, can be fixed. I can imagine that, when you, that's when, an easy fix. When me. you guys started, I hope so. When you guys I'm started at Hooks it, I'm sure. I mean, if you look at the breakdowns that we were doing at Hooks it, it's very like systematic. Everyone has kind of a role, and it gets done quickly. I'm sure that wasn't like that when you guys first started doing no, it. No, no. So I mean, for the first time, I mean just a show happening you know it's not live but we still managed to you know get the space get everything set up and get a recording done so i don't think it's going to be too difficult to fix the internet it seems like it's the easier problem of everything right so. right right that that can be fixed with a visit from comcast oh what i hope i hope you I hope. hope why hope. why do you say it like that I, I just feel like i feel like uh I think it's a deeper internet issue than that because I have no problem connecting with my phone. I have no problem connecting with my laptop, but my desktop, it's like, I don't know. It's like something, something's in there in the, in the soup of our network that is not, it's totally blocking my, my internet access. I mean, like, look, my camera is talking to my computer wirelessly. Like, so there's the internet's there, right? But we have no outside connection. Like I'm on the intranet, not the internet. Intra, not enter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really weird. Interesting. Interesting. Um, there are some other timeless cigars downstairs. Yep. The uh, Americanas, I believe. The Pan yep. America. Yeah, and, I've uh, smoked all of them. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you think of those? They're good. The um, the Panamericana out of the two was my favorite one. And then the other one was the, which one is it? You said? I don't remember off the top of my head. 
I had, I mean, they're, they're both really good cigars. One of them I didn't like as much as the other one. I forget which one it was now, but again, like, I can't compare it to the original Nat Sherman. Right. But after smoking the limited 10 year, I was like, I have to try the line because, you know, I wasn't expecting to like this cigar. And I'm like, mm -hmm. well, obviously, you know, I, I need to well, try the brand. And it's the uh, the the blend did not change, though, for Timeless. He's still using the same tobacco, same manufacturer. It just changed from Prior Ortego to from Nat Sherman. As far as I understand it, he got everything. Nothing changed. Yeah, I mean, they're good cigars. I mean, all of them are just really nice, kind of medium-bodied. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not too many pairings I can think of that wouldn't go with it. You know, you could probably yeah. get, like, over 100-proof bourbon. It would still stand up. Because, like, even though they're strength-wise, they're kind of in that kind of, you know, medium at the most. But the, right. the flavor is, like, medium plus to full. Like, this one here, I would consider it, like, a full body. Mm. Like, when it comes to, like, that finish, like, it lingers. That sweetness lingers. And it, again, like I, when I was kind of smoking it and kind of reviewing it to people in the humidor to try it, it, it's very much like a Davidoff experience. Like it's not a strong like nicotine cigar, mm -hmm. but it, it's very well blended. So you're getting a lot of like nuances from the tobacco and it's giving you like a nice long finish and there's a lot of complexity to it. Mm -hmm. You know, this specific cigar doesn't really transition to the back third of it. I got a little bit more of like a dark oak wood, right. but it's pretty consistent, but during the entire smoke, like, you can kind of pick different nuances from the blend just because there's a lot going on. With the rabbit hole, it's just giving me this, the finish is just this nutty caramel. Mm -hmm. And it, that's just so delicious. Yeah, definitely. The pairing is really, really good. Uh, Kendra did it again with, you know, 180 seconds notice. Mm -hmm. Big surprise, <laughs> right? <laughs> yep, yep. But uh, I was talking to her before the show started. You know, she, you know, does not want to be known as the potion master. She just wants you to get your bourbon and then leave her the hell alone. <laughs> so she didn't know, like think, Special K either. <laughs> no, but I think her new nickname is going to be. Here's your bourbon. Now leave me alone, Malone. <laughs> no, leave, leave me alone, Malone. <laughs> we'll have to make like a like a hashtag so it's kind of like Steve Saka cigar. Yeah, and yeah. Carol. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's very good. That's fine. Uh, so mm. we've got Columbus Day weekend coming up mm. uh, this weekend, and uh, weird kind of holiday. You know, uh, Columbus discovers America. Yes, he showed up, but kind of more South America than actually here. And uh, he may have discovered it, but there were people here. You've got, you know, for for our Native American friends, this is like a very hated holiday. Mm. You know, because um, he was a prick. And I have I have very <laughs> mixed bag feelings about the whole thing. But it's like the last big three day weekend of the year. And so a lot of people go camping, they go on vacation, they get the, you know, they take that one last, usually wow. good, good last weather good getaway. Yeah. Um, so do you guys have plans for the weekend or anything? Do you guys, do you do anything for this? Does your family do anything? Are you being left out of stuff because you're having to work at Twins? Yep. <laughs> you know, I work and I have midterms, so I don't really have any. Whatever time I yeah. get, it's put towards that. Yeah. Do you actually have you ever had midterms on a holiday? Um, no, no. Final is kind of kiss Christmas a little bit, but no, you don't usually. I think um, last year. I think my last midterm was Christmas Eve Eve. Mm. So we just got, you know, obviously if you want to travel or anything for Christmas Eve, you're screwed. But, right. you know, we haven't had anything like on a holiday. Although, I mean, Halloween, you can kind of potentially get stuck doing something. But I haven't had that happen to me yet. But right. I know people that have. Now, one of the things that's interesting about the cigars I'm smoking it is, it has three bands. Yeah. The 
made exclusively for Terrio Fuego, which I think is on all those cigars. And then the uh, limited 10 years band, and then the timeless band on top of that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things is I was smoking it earlier today. You know, I, I didn't quite know how I felt that three different times I had to remove the band as I went up went up the cigar. Mm -hmm. how, how much band is too much band on a cigar to you guys? So I don't think it's necessarily the band. It's the fact that each band says limited or exclusive. That's the annoying thing. Okay. I get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like the... Yeah. But I will say the band does complement the rapper, which is one of the things yeah, that I look for in gorgeous. the market. Yeah, There's just three of them. It's just like yeah. all this work. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Rocky Patel makes bands that go down eight inches of the cigar, too, but at least it all comes off at once. This you're having to, like, triple your work. Yep. And not only that, when you put three bands on something, you're increasing the cost, the, the, the cost and also the potential damage to the cigar by a factor of three. Mm -hmm. You know, with the glue running, you know what I mean? Because, you know, you know, it's all hand done. It's not yeah. like there's a machine putting these on. Right. You know what I mean? So you're, you're going to run into issues no matter how cool you are. So I think it's just, it should just be one thing. No band. matter how cool you are, you're going to run you know? into issues. Oh, you did, my yeah, gosh. You just got to, the human error shows up freaking everywhere. Yeah. Hence why we are not on tonight. <laughs> Live anyways. But, you know. Um, that's probably a good enough segue to go into uh, Pastor Padron's cigar confessions. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, the confession tonight is, you know, one of the things that I see people do that that like drives me a little nuts is people who are always trying to ash their cigar. You know, it's like this this thing where. You're looking at it, and, and they're, they're, you know, trying to make the ash fall off. And you don't, you don't want to do that. You want the ash on your cigar. You, and you want to wait until it's, frankly, just about ready to fall off naturally before, before you do that. The ash serves a purpose. The ash traps the heat at the end of the cigar so that it continues to burn. And if you keep getting rid of the ash you're going to affect the burn of the cigar and it's you can effectively put it out or make it start to burn funny mm -hmm. or you start to puff on it more and make it hotter <clears throat> so you don't want to continually be tapping your cigar or trying to get it trying to get all the ash off you want to keep a good layer of ash on your cigar so that it burns right and up oh, see there we go see? The rapper's on this one. Human error right there. Uh. Lick it and stick it. What about you, Pat? Is that like a... The ashing? For you? The ashing thing, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so my father is notorious for, like, ashing after, like, every single draw. And the only thing that I get annoyed about with it is if you're sharing the same ashtray... Mm -hmm. Like, he'll do it in a way that he uses the edges of the ashtray, like, even if it's the area that he used to actually put the cigar down. Like, he'll use yeah, that to rub it, it. And then you put your cigar down, so it's got ashes all yeah, over Yeah, so it ashtray. gets all over the actual, like, exterior of the ashtray, mm -hmm. you know? But, again, like, there's some people that, you know, like, for instance, like, I guess, like, tonight I'm wearing white pants or whatever. Like, there's some yeah. people that I feel the ash gives them a little bit of anxiety about it falling or flaking oh, on their pants and you know maybe it's just more relaxing if they just don't have some kind of an ash hanging on it but i mean especially if you're smoking outside yeah or if you're doing yard or whatever you're doing like that ash protects the cherry in the cigar like i know like a lot of the times because i smoke pretty slow like whenever right. i ash the cigar i usually have to touch it up a little bit right not because of any fault of the cigar but because immediately just because i smoke so slow when the ash comes off like you know the wrapper kind of stops igniting so that's when you're going to run into that canoeing problem mm -hmm. so i try to keep the ash on as long as i can yeah you gotta you gotta keep that going and here my my third band wouldn't unpop so i had to kind of pull it off which again just drop the ash which kind of you know 
I'm like, I'm just talking about how you don't want to do this. And here I had to do it because I couldn't get the sticking band off the cigar. Yep. So my pet you know, peeve had... is people that take the band off immediately when they get the cigar. Mm. Oh, yeah, that makes me cringe because I'm like, you're asking for it. And then you're going to be like, oh, it's burning funny. Oh, it's got a hole in it. Oh. <laughs> One of the cool tricks I learned because, again, I'm a huge Fuente guy, yeah. Pat Fuente, you know, whatever. Pet to me, Only Pet Fuente, Fuente is, Pet is the worst company when it comes to glue on bands. Like, mm. whether it's Opus, like Coraline, Grand Reserva, Don Carlos, like, so many times. And, I, again, I have Fuentes from, like, 10 years ago. Like, right. you buy, you know, smoke one of those, band, too much glue on it. You buy one in the humidor downstairs that's new, too much glue on it. So a cool trick that I actually learned is if you take the flame of a torch, which I don't know what my torch is, but you... You know, you keep decent distance, but you mm-hmm. kind of use the heat of the flame where the band connects. Right. It actually heats the glue up, and it comes off a lot easier. So if there is any glue actually on the wrapper, mm-hmm. it's not going to be as invasive when you take it off. Right. So that that is kind of a handy trick, and it it doesn't torch, it doesn't like set flame to the band or anything like that. Right. You just got to keep a nice distance, kind of melt the glue, and it just comes right off. Right. You're not you're not trying to burn the wrapper, just heat it up. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to be careful with that. But yeah, that does work. Mm-hmm. I've had to do that once or twice. That's good myself. to know. I've had to do that once or twice myself. Never thought of that. That's good stuff, Pat. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm. Is a cigar changing at all for you guys as we smoke it? We're all about halfway down, I think. So at this Except point, for the green egg, Pat. He's the slow smoker. So at this point, I'm getting like those richer flavors, like that kind of oak wood that I'm talking about that's starting to come through. And then the, the rabbit hole is adding kind of a bitter espresso mm-hmm. to it, which again, bitter doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. Acidic means a bad thing, not bitter. Mm-hmm. So I think the drink, just because it has kind of like that nice heat on the finish and it kind of gives you like that kind of bitter kind of like toffee, I want to say, kind of note, like kind of a bitter espresso toffee on the finish. That's kind of going into the cigars, so that you're getting those richer kind of oak wood flavors. So that's going to be developing more into that kind of like that. I want to say kind of a ground espresso bean. Mm. Like it's earthy. It has that espresso bitterness to it. So and it's again for a cigar like this, you know, when I smoke cigars, typically like I like that back third to get a little bit more richer mm-hmm. to get those darker kind of more fuller bodied flavors out of it. So right. again, that's one of the reasons why this cigar spoke a lot to me because you get that nice. Raspberry sweetness, that creaminess, that nuttiness, and then it just kind of transitioned to like a nice dark, rich kind of ending of the cigar. Mm. Yeah, the the earthiness and woodiness of the cigar is increasing as I get to the back half of it. The nuttiness is still there, but it's more in the background. The sweetness is still there, but it's more in the background. It's not as raspberry sweet as it was at the beginning it's it's getting the flavors are building and getting a lot more intense uh interestingly though um the rabbit hole still plays really well with that and the sweetness of the bourbon really um helps to bring a lot of that sweetness that's in the background of the cigar forefront a little bit so you're getting still getting those richer flavors but you're able to enjoy that sweetness that's in the cigar um even as just on your palate, smoking the cigar itself just kind of fades a little bit. Are you experiencing the same thing, guys? Or is it just me? Yeah, like like I said, like with this cigar, it it doesn't add or lose any nuances to it. You know, I think like that oak wood I'm talking about, that's just developing of that kind of like woody note that I was talking about at the beginning. So again, like it doesn't lose anything, but just different flavors move to the forefront. So again, like yeah. that raspberry sweetness is definitely stuck on the retro hail, especially like during the retro, you're getting that nice raspberry sweetness on the palate, mm-hmm. but on the back third of the cigar, that kind of lingering finish is more of like those richer nuances of the blend. Yep. Yep. Um, I'm just getting like this creamy, I don't know what, if it's like a white pepper or something with in the retro hail. Mm-hmm. It's a very creamy spice. And I'll say, too, one of the things with this cigar, this is about the fourth one I've had. Okay. They're all very tightly packed. Yes. But when you cut it, wide open draw. Yeah. The draw is perfect on this thing. 
Now my ash is getting back to where I kind of like it, you know. All right, yours is really tortured there. You, you totally killed your rapper, Dave. Ripping the thing off a little bit early. I do not rip it off early. <laughs> Pat's looking at you like you did something sinful to that cigar. Bad craftsmanship, what I have to say. I don't know. I think the cigar is pretty damn perfect. Hey, yeah. Very, very good. Um, what's our final thoughts on this bad boy? It's um, it's limited, so I I don't know how many. We might have like four or five boxes left. Yeah, we Box still have the a ten. Boxes, yep. It's one of those that if you enjoy a Dominican cigar, if you have a palate that you enjoy Davidoff cigars, because for whatever reason it just reads Davidoff to me. I don't know why, but I know it's distributed by them. It's on a like, before I even knew Davidoff touched it. I to me, I was like, this is very Davidoffy. Mm -hmm. It is very Davidoff. -y. It is very Davidoffy. Yeah. So if you like those kinds of cigars, yeah. I definitely suggest trying it. I know Dave spoke to that. You know the blends haven't changed from the original Timelesses to now. But if it's a limited edition, I don't know if they change it. Oh no, that's this is definitely a a new blend in a new factory for this one. Okay. But I'm just saying that the regular timeless has it, it's still the same. Yeah. This um, is definitely this is, this is absolutely stupendously creamy. Mm -hmm. So if yeah. you like creamy cigars, if you like nutty cigars, this is just so good to try. Yeah, it's buttery, it's buttery. one of those cigars that I think out of this year stands out, and I think while they're in stock, it's definitely worth trying one of them to kind of get that experience. And again, if you like this cigar, it might be worth kind of diving into the time, like the Nat Sherman line. Mm -hmm. But again, like even if you've had Nat Sherman in the past and you have like an iffy opinion about it, this is a completely different level for me. So, all right. Well, we're going to take a break, and when we're back, we're going to be lighting up the pipes with something that's a lot older than 10 years. It's freaking 200 years old, and that's going to be the uh, Gawith Hogarth Dark Flake. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <clears throat> All right, everybody, we're back. And we are smoking <coughs> Gawith Hogarth's Dark Flake Unscented. Uh, from the website, uh, the description is given like this. A very strong but very cool smoke and is the result of combining in equal proportions only Malawi dark fire leaf and Indian dark air cured leaf. Uh, that would be... Um, uh, well, let's get into that later. No additional flavors. You can smell in this tobacco the smoky flavor of the dark air-cured leaf derived from its curing process of being hung in above smoky fires and the sweeter yet still strong cigar-type flavor of the dark air-cured Indian leaf. It's manufactured by Gawith Hogarth. Um, it's a Burley and Virginia blend. Nothing has been added, according to them, as far as extra flavorings are concerned. And it comes in a very big, long flake. It comes like this. It's available in bulk. Here at Twins, it comes in 500-gram boxes. We sell it uh, by the ounce. It's uh, $6 an ounce, I believe, um, downstairs. And uh, it's very good stuff. We're continuing to enjoy the rabbit hole with this tobacco and um to me this is very full-bodied full flavored um it's got lots of oaky notes smoky wood um there's some dark fruit notes from the virginias that are in there but nutty earthy it's got this kind of molasses like sweetness to it on the finish um it's a really, really nice full-bodied tobacco if you're looking for something like that. What do you think there, Dave? Definitely a great full-bodied tobacco. Um, it's got like this awesome smoked hickory, mm -hmm. smoked wood, campfire type taste to it. Um, a little bit of espresso. Um, and uh, that stays 
and lingers on the palate. And the retro hail is, I think, just as rich. Pat, what about you? It's pretty good. Dave got I I got a hickory note out of it, so Dave took that one from me. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it has like a really unique sweetness to it. And honestly, even before you mentioned cigar like flavor from mm-hmm. the tin, it has like a Maduro sweetness to it. It does. Like it reminds me of like a Nicaraguan Maduro. It has like mm-hmm. a really like kind of like red pepper, earthy like dark sweetness to it. Mm-hmm. You get that hickory that kind of follows, and you have like a really nice kind of charred kind of oak. And, you know, that smokiness lingers on the palate as well. And then I haven't had an opportunity to have the rabbit hole yet to see how that kind of plays into it. Right. But yeah, it's really, again, full bodied, and it has a lot of those like kind of cigar nuances to it. Yeah. So if you're a cigar guy thinking about getting into pipes and you don't want to go down the aromatic route, this might be something that's uh, right up your alley. Um, now, that said, <clears throat> Something that is true with just about every Gawith Hogarth blend that is out there. Um, it comes very wet right out of the box. Um, you know, now Gawith Hogarth is over 200 years old. With their their roots go back into the late 17 into the early 1790s, 1792, I think. <clears throat> And one of the things that you wanted back in the 19th and 19th century, even going into the 20th century, was tobacco that could be taken on voyages because that was how you got long distance traveling done back then. You wanted it to be able to survive long trips at sea, um, sea air, you know, dry stuff out incredibly quickly. Um, and so a lot of their tobaccos have the, you know, their flakes and their ropes have a lot of moisture in them. And I think a big part of that was so that it would be able to survive three months, six months, even a year if you were on the, the ship that long. And they really have not changed how they've done things over the last 200 years. And... You know, now today, we don't really have those issues to worry about. We don't need to worry about keeping tobacco for months and months outside of some kind of sealed environment. <clears throat> you know, we have these things called mason jars now to make sure that doesn't happen. But uh, uh, so the result is their tobacco really takes some significant time uh, to dry before you smoke it. So it's almost like you have to plan like these strips of tobacco that I, that we have here, I got out this morning at around nine o'clock and they're still pretty moist to the touch. They've dried out a lot. You can tell by looking at them. I can tell, you know, you know, from, uh, you know, that, that the moisture level they have now is a fraction of what it was, you know, earlier today. But they've been out in the sun. They've been literally put out to bake. And, you know, they're on paper towels, so the, the paper towel would dr- draw the moisture out from the tobacco as well. And it's 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 the one thing that, uh, that you know, I that keeps... M- people from enjoying this tobacco I think as much as it could be is that you get these great flavors but because the tobacco is so moist um, it's hard to it's hard to keep lit <laughs> and so you're you're constantly relighting it and mm-hmm. and um, you know it, it's like the one I wish I didn't have to relight as often as I do so I tried very hard to dry this stuff out and I know that because I've talked for 60 seconds, I'm going to have to light my pipe again because it's just that it, it won't stay lit unless you are constantly puffing at it. Um, but I don't really, this is, and this is the only brand of tobacco that I constantly have this issue with. Mm-hmm. Would you agree, Dave? Yeah, I would. And I can remember when we, uh, we did um, the uh, Black Irish X. Uh, the sausage rope episode 
the, uh, stage rope. <laughs> the, um, you know, it was, we had talked about it before, how it was going to be like a clicky episode. Because mm-hmm. we were going to hear everybody going, because, uh, you know, what we ended up having that out on the, on the sun, on the, on the shelf. For four hours mm-hmm. before the show, you know, and that was like a summertime show, so that was right. like, you know, uh, and it didn't do really much of anything. <laughs> <laughs> we still were 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 clicking along, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, this is by far the the best so far. Mm. That I think that we've done with the Gowith. Well, I started out with a little bit of a, I gave it a little bit of scientific help. I. Uh, Put it in the microwave and nuked it for about twenty seconds. There you go. Just to, and you know how microwaves just and now mine's pull out. the moisture out of everything. So do that, and then I took them off the paper towel that I had in there. You could see the, the sopping wet moisture underneath where the strips were. Put them on a dry paper towel and then just let them sit. And this is this is where we're at. So. You know, literally about 12 hours of drying time with about 15, 20 seconds in the microwave. <laughs> in the microwave. That's hilarious. Kind of speed things along. And it's still really moist. Mm-hmm. Have any of you uh, been able to have it with a rabbit hole a little bit? Mm. Oh. We'll find out. Mm. Rabbit hole, no matter which one it is, it's always been yeah. so darn good. I, I love rabbit hole. It's good mm-hmm. stuff. Thank you, Talia, for bringing it to us. Mm-hmm. She's in Greece right now. Mm. Yeah, so when I talked to her like a week ago, she was in Italy. So mm-hmm. she's just doing a European tour. Mm-hmm. She sent me a bunch of pictures, but they're on the uh, <clears throat> the other phone. Mm. So got the spread of what she was eating, and I was just like, oh, mm. oh man. See, um... The toasted American barrel, I think, brings out the kind of like that that smokiness from the pipe mm-hmm. tobacco more, and then that kind of like calm out toffee type sweetness in the finish is bringing out more of that natural kind of Maduro sweetness I was talking about. Mm-hmm. It's like that kind of hickory note kind of stands out a lot more. Yeah, in the I think I think you're right on there. <clears throat> hmm. Do you think it's as good a pairing as it was with the cigar? It's kind of a tough, tough one. I, mean, I know they're both, they're both pretty complimentary. I, I don't, I don't think I can say one's better than the other. Like I think it hit the ball on both of them. Yeah. You know, like. And I'm surprised. I did not think that this was gonna be strong enough to deal with this pipe tobacco, but it's holding its own. I think the natural sweetness in it really complements the tobacco, and you know those Virginias have a lot of sugar in them, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I think it's enhancing those darker you know fruit notes that are in the tobacco um i get some uh hay notes you know when i'm just smoking the tobacco by itself but with the bourbon those kind of go away and you're left with a lot of the deeper richer flavors and the sweetness comes out which i really like so i'm thinking the bourbon really plays well with this I think it's amazing how when they like you know they press or 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 steam their tobacco how drastically it changes the taste Mm. you know of a virginia from what we're used to you know what i mean Mm -hmm. well and and, we know what 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 uh where the virginias came from or um i believe the malawi was the burley and the um indian is the uh, virginia's but they're, you know, they're both, you know, done over uh, fires. Mm. <clears throat> and so both are smoked. And so it adds a lot of that richness. And I think... Well, these were... This was unscented, right? So what does... Doesn't that mean that they... Unscented means nothing has been added to it. Right? <clears throat> so there's a scented version of this dark flake which has several different toppings, uh, Tonkin, anise, and one other that I can't think of off the top of my head. Uh, so there are, you know, flavors that are, that are 
entered in with a tobacco that aren't part of that process of of smoking it. Yeah. But smoking is not. Smoking something is not a uh, not a yeah that's not that's not yeah, yeah that's, that's just part of the process. You know, dark dark fired Kentucky, which is basically what the Malawi is, is not you know a scented thing. Mm. When I was doing my research, potentially for doing the Davisode, mm-hmm. um, the uh, one thing that I noticed from all the comments I read on the reviews about it was it's too strong. Mm. <laughs> you know that was like whenever but anybody rated this with a low rating it was because it's too strong and i always chuckle at that i'm like well you just don't like good tobacco <laughs> you know <laughs> <clears throat> but, but uh it is it, it it's true it, it is funny and i don't you know it, this is one of the strongest tobaccos that god with hogarth makes um this um the black irish x the brown, brown irish brown x, x, x yep. those are you know you know, this is in that realm of, of strength. Yeah. As n- n- not it's only in terms six of six stars, not only in terms of, of flavor, but in terms of, you know, the nicotine, nicotine content. Yeah. There's a lot of nicotine in this, a lot of vitamin N, as some people would say. Yeah. Um, you know, that said, you know, being a cigar guy too, I really like that stronger, full bodied mm-hmm. flavor, you know, and, and, you know, I can appreciate, like with the Timeless 10 years, that's really a kind of a straight medium, you know, but very balanced, very nuanced, very complex kind of flavor profile going on. And you can, uh, you can, you know, your palate is not getting assaulted, you know, with that. So I can still appreciate that. Yeah. But this is much more, the flavor is very much more in your face, you know, on your palate. It's, there's... You know, you're not having to struggle with, you know, what am I tasting here? It's it's very plain and very straightforward. Um, and the finish is really, really long with this, too, which I like. Um, but, uh, yeah, if, if you don't like strong tobaccos or you don't like full-bodied stuff, this is definitely something that I would stay away from. Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 one of the reviews that I read... Uh, it was kind of funny because he gave it three stars, but, um, and he was talking about, you know, it's too strong. I wish they would like, you know, tone down on like the strength of the nicotine, blah, blah, blah. And then after he said that, he actually talked about what he tasted and he was just like, it was like a five-star review, Mm. like quality level Mm -hmm. of like someone just really enjoying this. Mm. But he's like, I just couldn't finish the bowl because of how strong it was. But this was just like (laughs) absolutely amazing. But he gave it three stars because it was just too much, you know? And I, I was like, I was like, you know, I was just like, I was laughing because it was, (laughs) it was a really good review. So have you guys ever had a cigar or pipe that was so strong you couldn't finish it? The only one that I, (laughs) that's like, no, the only, the only times I had to like put down a cigar was when it was probably like the first one that I smoked that day. And it was, there were two of them. One was the Chrome Magnum mm-hmm. Knuckle Dragger. And I was like the first cigar I smoked of the day. And that was just a bad idea, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you know, was, I hadn't eaten anything. So that much end in the morning just didn't do me too well. And the other time was when I I smoked uh, um, Captain Earl's uh, the 10, Ten Russians. Russians. Yeah. And I couldn't, I just couldn't finish the bowl that time. You know, I just, you know, I've had it before and, and smoked the whole bowl, but that day it just it was just too much. Had you not eaten? No, I think that was like the last thing I was smoking that day. Mm-hmm. So I'd probably already had like two or three cigars and like another bowl pack. So it was probably like the fifth thing I was smoking that day. And I thought it was just like, <laughs> no, we're, we're, you're done. <laughs> Remember like early days and me smoke this is probably like around when i started at twins so like before like, i started at six t- months ago when you were 21 <laughs> maybe like you know maybe like two two years and like four months damn, yeah. you know? you give me, that, that's pretty long for the basis we got going on but <laughs> the I, I remember i was smoking a um asylum 13 medulla mm-hmm. and I, I don't think it's that strong it's stronger than the Coraline asylums 
but I was on the porch and I didn't have anything to eat that day. I probably smoked like three cigars that day at work and I just went home with my dad and I was smoking it. And I remember I, got, I was halfway through the cigar and I was like, I feel like shit. <laughs> and I, just, but I, I was enjoying the cigar so much because again, I'm still trying out new things and that was like my first asylum. Mm. And I was like, I feel so awful, but I don't want to stop. Then I remember I finished the cigar <laughs> and I stood up and I was like, you know, if, if, we, had a, if, if we had a sensor button, I was like, I am up right now. <laughs> so I remember I went inside my house and I just sat on the toilet for like an hour and I was just looking like down on the ground like my life sucks. <laughs> it was bad. There's a customer here who it's experience the same thing with some asylum that maybe we could have you talk to yeah yeah <laughs> it's a little bit of a difference though but yeah i i probably made like 10 life decisions on the toilet in that hour like i was like i, I need to rethink my life a little yeah. bit right now but yeah it was really good cigar but yeah i haven't had anything that i've actually had to cease smoking because of the strength of it i yeah. think i think one of the other ones that i actually had to put down for a cigar was uh jfr maduro mm. it was just i had it you know it was like my last cigar of the day and i was just like i just can't finish this thing those things are strong mm. those jfr maduros those are really good love those you know i think i think i've shared it on the show here before but uh you know in opus x uh number four back in the late 90s had one of those it's a little corona size cigar it's not that big <clears throat> those are the strong but, ones though but it was it, you know it's a strong cigar and um i remember you know i finished it but i then sat down on a couch not unlike this and just stared out at the door of the store i was working on i you know locked the door and then just spaced out for about 30 minutes i was totally stoned and so it wasn't like i couldn't finish it but like when I was done and, you know, after about a half an hour sitting there, I was like, well, I've now experienced Opus and I don't think I need another one for a while. I can't, I can't feel like this, especially at work. You're Opusized. It's one of those but, things with like Opus is like each side, it's, it's like the, um, the Byron's and the Atabay's mm -hmm. and everything. Like each size is an entirely different cigar mm -hmm. which is under the same line. Mm -hmm. So someone that smokes like the, like perfection X or the double Chateau, like to me, the double Chateau is like the, the mildest mm -hmm. of the core line mm -hmm. Opus. Mm -hmm. So people can smoke those larger ones and be like, Oh, it's not that bad. Then like when you have like the Fuente Fuente, which is kind of like a, it's like a mix of a Robusto and a Corona. It's kind of weird. Like mm -hmm. it, it's like a five by, I want to say like a forty six. Yeah, it's a it's a thinner ring gauge. And then the Petite Lancero, which I don't think they've made in a long time. And then mm. the number four that you smoke, like yep. those are like the stronger of the Opuses. Like even if you look at like the, the Del Siglos or like the the Forbidden Xs, like mm -hmm. those are like really strong, especially like right out of the box, young. Mm -hmm. Like those are strong cigars. And again, like your experience, like that's. I've actually had a friend of mine that smoked the, um, I think it was a number five. So you had the four of the fives, mm -hmm. like a little petite Corona. Yeah. Smoked one of those things. A really small cigar, but he was like done. wobbling when he was done. Yeah. <laughs> he, he wasn't having another one. Like, mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, is the tobacco here changing at all as it goes down the bowl for you guys? Yeah. It's burning less. <laughs> it's, it's burning, burning less. less. As the moisture content increases, <laughs> mine's actually been pretty good as far as like burn has been going. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Am I am I the only one who broke it up? I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I jammed it in there. I'm sinning right now. I'm using a torch. Oh, oh, Jesus had to die for sins like that. Oh Pat. man, Jew right. oh, he came gosh. back once and come back again. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope that's the point. <laughs> so oh, it says revelations. Hmm. Oh my goodness! So, what do you think about the influx of all the, the just to change the topic here? Yeah, sure. About, um, what do you think of all the influx lately of all the new superhero movies and shows that are just popping up everywhere? Everybody's got a new superhero show that's not Marvel, not DC, and they're just making shit up now. Like what? I can't even some remember that. Some... I can't, can't remember. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a bunch on Netflix, mm -hmm. you know. 
it's definitely the multiverses and crossovers, you know, getting old actors to do stuff. It's definitely the uh, uh, the fad, you know, superhero or let's 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 broaden it a little bit and say the supernatural stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, that's been the fad for a long time. Like all the ghost um, shows and yeah, stuff like and that. And zombie shows mm -hmm. and and you know they're just you know hbo's coming out with a brand new thing you know um it's it's i think i think in especially when it comes to marvel and dc i think some people are starting to get tired of it i mean you know you've got marvel planning out into phase seven you know i i think it's just a little bit of overkill did you even see morbius I did. What'd you think? It was horrible. I thought it was like, if I was like 16, I would have really liked it. Yeah, that's probably true. Um, you know, it just, it was, it was so, it was so predictable and so kind of cliche. Uh, you know, I think the only good th thing about it was you got to see Matt Smith as something other than the doctor. You know, I think it's it, it broke the mold for him. <laughs> he got to play a bad guy, and now now he's in Game of Thrones, and now he's got more of a, <clears throat> I can play the bad dude. I'm not typecast as some quirky Time Lord mm -hmm. kind of thing. <clears throat> um, but, uh, but, yeah, I, I think it's getting, I think it's, it's starting to get old. I mean, and, um, you know, my my 16 year old ray and i we've been watching uh she hulk on disney plus i still have not watched it what do you think about it i and haven't watched it yet i i think it's good for what it is it's 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 kind of a procedural law comedy and you, you remember like how in some of these shows are like ally mcbeal and some of these old shows that were on you know the every once in a while the character will turn and just start talking to you kind of breaking the fourth, fourth wall, wall break, they, yeah. they call it that happens a lot in this in this show and <clears throat> if you understand that and appreciate it and are thinking okay so they're not trying to do so they're trying and, and frankly it's it's a lot more i think like the the comic they're, they're trying to transfer transfer the kind of fun quirky thing that was in the comic book into the show and i think you know all people care about, and I have to admit, I'm kind of on that border of being one of these people <laughs> who are watching it. Is they're waiting to see Daredevil come into it. <laughs> you know, the the Daredevil series on Netflix. I, I've been rewatching that. It's it's one of the best. It's yep. one of the best Daredevil super, was absolutely superhero amazing. shows, and you you know it's damn good when they they end up bringing uh, both. Uh, the guy who plays Daredevil, Ma uh, Matthew Cox, and Vincent DiFeronio, who played the Kingpin, into the Marvel Universe. He was they a both, great Kingpin. He was a great Kingpin. And um, the fact that they're bringing them back and then bringing them back into another series, <clears throat> I'm really looking forward to. But they've been teasing Daredevil coming in since this thing started. The previews for the show, before it even aired, had pictures of Daredevil in it. Um, Daredevil's mask is seen in episode five. Now we're at episode, you know, we're coming up on episode eight, and he has not yet appeared. Mm. And people are people are screaming and mad. Where is Daredevil? And you know, I'm <laughs> this like, isn't the Mandalorian. I'm like, we're we're going to show just like, She-Hulk here. <laughs> it's it's called She-Hulk. It's not about you know there are cameos by other people. Yeah. But it's it's really about the main character of the show, and um, I I don't understand why people are so rip roaring mad that you know this other character is not yet in the show that mm. is not actually his show at all. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I, I really, I'm excited that they're bringing him back. I really want to see him. But, you know. I saw a really good uh, uh, Facebook reel. And it was uh, Spider-Man mm -hmm. was, like, 
Uh, it must have been, it looked like it was at like a Comic-Con or something like that. And a guy dressed as Spider-Man was like stuck up against a couple of like, uh, he was stuck up in a wall. And there was a, this chick passing by and he was, you know, he's like, hey, take a picture or something. So he took a picture, she took a picture with him. And then he goes down to like look at his phone to see if he got it. And he takes off his spider mask and it was Andrew Garfield. <laughs> he's like yeah and then he puts his mask back on and climbs back up on the roll to see if he can do it again but i just thought that was just like so funny how like the person thought he was, spider-man yeah it was was being spider-man and the person just didn't even know who it was you know mm-hmm. that it was actually spider-man you know i just thought that was a real clever reel <laughs> you're very quiet pat yeah <laughs> he's, he's, like, oh. he's like what the hell are you guys yeah, talking about I know about? my bounds when you guys talk superheroes I'm uh, I'm not up for that mm-hmm. I don't have much input there what, what about the new Halo series I haven't had a chance to watch it yet because you're a big Halo player weren't you yeah I um I watched the new Hocus Pocus yeah yep. sorry <laughs> did it did it was it good I, I don't know no, i think it was really good it's it's funny because like you know they i mean again it's a halloween tradition to watch hocus pocus mm-hmm. and having the new one come out i think was really good and you know it's cool i mean you kind of look at you know like the original hocus pocus came out like a long time ago when yeah was that? i was like <clears throat> well, i don't, I don't know even when, remember but it was a long time ago but it, it's it, it was funny because again like they took a lot of current trends that are going on and they kind of put it like, you know, one of the, the witches is flying around on one of those Roomba, like self cleaning vacuums. Like, uh, right. You know, they, they just took like a lot of current things that we have and put it in the movie and like, mm. you know, they're kind of like, what the hell is this thing? Kind of, you know, it, it was a good movie. 93. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So 20 years ago. Yeah. I think if you want to dig in. Oh, no, almost 30. Right. Yep. Almost 30, 29. 29. 29 years ago. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's a nice nostalgia. You know, it's mm. it was good. You excited about The Witcher 3? Oh, I'm so pumped. Yeah. Did you like season 2? Yeah, I mean, the thing with me, so th- that that was my covid thing is yeah. The Witcher cuz I I found the games, I played all three of the games. Mm-hmm. I played Witcher 3 probably like like 10 full playthroughs, which if you've played The Witcher, it's a really long game and i ended up buying two real swords from poland i bought Mm. like i I did a lot like Mm. so when the shows came out i was really invested in them i've read the books the only thing about the show that i don't like is it's not it's based on the books they say but it's really not the same as the books and it frustrates me like in season two like i was immediate i mean again like i take it for what it is i don't write right right books but like Esco is a huge character in the books mm-hmm. and the game, right? And they completely changed the character. And if you didn't watch it, disclaimer, whatever. They killed him off early. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, this is like Geralt's like brother. You know, right. he's, he's a huge part of the story. Right. He just completely took this character and just mm-hmm. yeah, the dynamic between him, him and Esco was like you know part of the human. And he too, was like know, this womanizer great. guy. Yeah. Like he was disrespecting women before he died. He wasn't like that at all. You know, and the fact that they took that character and made him like, you know, and then whatever, you know. So, and then Vesemir, he's different in the movie. Like, he's mm-hmm. wiser in the books. Like, you know, having, like, the prostitutes go to the um, Kara Morin, like, he would have never wanted, it, it, you know. But again, right. like, for what it is, it's really good. And I think yeah, that. Yeah, I think that's what you need to, you know, I when I watch stuff like this, they're going to change it from the book because they don't want you to be completely aware of what's happening next. They, they want, if there's nothing new, people aren't going to, if there's nothing new, A, you're just going to be nitpicking, you know, about the book, but you can't be surprised if you know what's coming up. So they did the same thing with Lord of the Rings. That's why they changed oh, Yeah, but things. Lord of the Rings really... <clears throat> They left out things, but they didn't really add much. You know what I mean? They really stayed true to the feel mm-hmm. of it. And I can kind of get where Pat's coming from, where they kind of, like, totally, like, did some stuff they probably maybe shouldn't have. My yeah. big thing with it is, like, 
if you want to change character, whatever, but like, I forget what they call them, like the, the, um, the obelisks, what are they, what is it called? It's, it's like the stones that they're using. It's called something like the stones that they use to like, that's how you travel different mm -hmm. dimensions, like the obelisks. I forget what they call it, but that entire concept, I'm like, why are you doing this? Like, it's yeah. a completely new concept and it changes like all the fundamentals of like and you look at like Siri and you know the Elder Blood, she can teleport, go to different dimensions. Why is this stone like this big thing? And it was in right. Caramore in the entire time. It, yeah, that's the thing that I don't. And then that's how like the monsters are traveling. Like that's the only thing that I was kind of like, why? Because it, mm -hmm. it, it it's yeah. like it, at least if you want to change Esco, like it's still Esco. You change the way he is as a character, whatever. But like, adding this whole new concept that changes like everything mm. is the only thing that I'm kind of like. I can't really get into like it's yeah now as, as somebody who didn't read the books and never played the games i think the series is really enjoyable i, I have no idea played... witcher 3 nope mm. i have no idea so game. i have no idea what was changed but you know so coming at it just as somebody watching the the show you know i i think that they're, they're making a very compelling show is it totally true to the books apparently not but i still think they're making something that's good yeah it's good content that's for sure that's and i'm a huge a like content. witcher fan so just seeing that there's something being made that other people are enjoying mm -hmm. you know yeah like i have my critiques of it but mm -hmm. you know i i'm very happy how Geralt was was portrayed well the thing again it, um mark hamill is that Mark Hamill? No. Right? Oh my God. Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill. <laughs> this is Star Wars. I'm thinking of Star it's Wars the right now. So yeah, Henry. It's funny because Henry, because I've been watching like a lot of interviews with it. He's play. He's read the books. He's played the games, mm -hmm. and he will actually tell people on set to get in character. Like he's very vested in the entire like everything Witcher, mm -hmm. and the only character that's being portrayed as the right kind of character is Geralt. Geralt and it's because he's vested in in the the lore yeah and, and it, it's spot on like he's right that's no, literally he's Geralt. fantastic it's that's literally Geralt like there's nothing different from him in the games and then some people like again it just goes to like you have to appeal to different consumers or whatever like I know like season one there was a lot of critiques about how he barely talked and blah, 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 and let him talk more and, you know, that's why he talks a lot more in season two. But, again, if you know the lore and the books and the way that, you know, the trial of the grass is, you have no emotion. Like, that's why he was the way he was in season one. Right, but... right. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I think I think it's a, it's a great series. And I'm, I'm really happy with it. The only I thing I will say that's well. very different that I do like is Yennefer. Like, mm. the story of her is different than the books and mm -hmm. how she became how she did. I think that was really the cool. The actress who's playing her, too, does a great job. Yeah, like, all that backstory that they added with Yennefer, I think, is mm. really, really good. Yeah, the backstory of Yennefer was really well done, I think. I thought it was really yep. cool. And then Danny Lyons, kind of spot on, too, in a way, but he's a little bit different. But mm. Yeah, all the music we got from that was awesome. Yeah, like, you know, everybody came out and covered the song and redid it. The metal versions are the best. Yep, you yeah, know, it's so good. Yep. So, what's the final verdict here on a Dark Flake? Is this something that you could recommend to other people? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Everything that I like in a pipe tobacco, it's just again like the only thing that I have with pipes is when it's a chore to smoke, mm -hmm. and it, it's so hard to smoke. And I, if you do it the right way. No issues, but again, I, I don't like the. I just don't like lighting it every ten seconds. Which mm -hmm. again, it's not the fault of the tobacco. It's just we didn't. We, we should have prepped it a little bit earlier. Yep. But again, like flavor wise, like if you are a cigar guy, hands down, this is what I would suggest someone to try because it's mm. it's very very good. It's full body that hickory note you get out of mm. it, which I've had in other pipe tobaccos, but it was really prevalent in this blend. Like really really good strong stuff and if mm. you like you know like wake up in the morning you want to get a nice like feeling like you know you a do. nice black coffee and just get like a nice like i don't want to say a buzz but get a nice like 
start to your day and just mm-hmm. be ready to go like that's it you know that or dog bird's eye but mm, it's yeah. it's a really wake you up wake up like <laughs> get ready to tackle the day and you know if, if you sit it out for 30 days before you smoke <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. dave what about you no i love it i love the richness i love the woody hickoriness the sweetness mm-hmm. that you get from that um the robust flavor the smooth retro hail um it's just absolutely wonderful. I, I, I think Gawith and Hogarth is is probably like one of my favorite, you know, blenders of pipe tobacco because mm. they just everything they make is just like um, intense. Mm. They definitely are known for making some of the strongest tobaccos on the market. Um, this is a big winner for me. Again, I have the same caveat that that uh, Pat had that. It can be a real pain in the butt to light, um, but the flavors are so good you just want to keep going at it, you know, even when it's difficult. One uh, of those things that I want to smoke again, just letting it sit. Mm. Mm. Well, we have a lot more here. Yeah. Very good. Well, next Tuesday on Not Just Blowing Smoke, we're going to be here again. At the lounge, hopefully, hopefully live, <clears throat> hopefully live mm-hmm. but we'll be recording uh, regardless. We're gonna do the uh, Tatawahe uh, Kohonu 2015, and oh, the, did we get that in yet? Yes. Oh, I didn't and know that. Peterson University Flake, which has been around for a while, but uh, is new to Twins, and that unlike some of the other Peterson blends that we've had that used to be Dunhill, this was actually a Peterson blend. Are you- and um, so I'm excited to do that. It's a, so it's our first really kind of true Peterson tobacco that we will be smoking on the show. Uh, so that's it for tonight. Thanks for being here, everybody. And we'll see you next Tuesday, 8 o'clock, if everything goes well, yeah. right here from the 724 Lounge. We'll see you then.